Maybe I should retitle this The Matusowitz Family. Should I? Yeah, probably. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Crew Time. Crew Time. Crew Time. <laughs> if you are new here, hello. My name is Sarah and what I do here is tell you a terrible story to ruin your day and put on my makeup at the same time. So if that sounds fun to you, then you should probably just subscribe while you're here, hit the bell notification, and then that way you will know every time I upload a new video. Today's story comes from the first state in the union, the home of the world's largest population of horseshoe crabs. Really? Really? The state where registered corporations outnumber actual people. This is Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. Today's story was recommended by a viewer here on YouTube named Stephanie Boltena. Hi, Stephanie. She told me that she knew the suspect in this case. Such a small world, such a small world. Well, I'm so sorry that this happened to somebody so close to you, but thank you for recommending the story. It's terrible and it's wild, okay? It gets crazier as it goes on, so hold on to your butts. This is the story of David Matusowitz. Big shout out to Investigation Discovery for the episode that really gave me most of the information for the story. I mean, there's a lot of court records, there's a lot of appeals and things like that, but the episode is called Internet of Lies, Web of Spies. <laughs> this story is actually pretty complicated and this episode did a really good job of highlighting all the important points. There's always people asking me like, what is this foundation brush? <laughs> what is my foundation? It's all linked down in the description box if you're interested. David Matusowitz was a successful optometrist, alumni of Glassboro State College, and he worked at Virgil Ballas in Newark, Delaware. In 1993, he met Christine Belford. So Christine uh, worked for him at the optometry shop <laughs> office. Christine had a two-year-old daughter named Catherine from a previous marriage. Both of them had been pretty recently divorced when they met. They were just friends for about five years before they started dating in 1998. And in 2001, they were married in a beautiful wedding ceremony surrounded by friends and family. Things in the marriage were going very well. You know, they were happy, things were good. They lived in a beautiful home on Norva Drive in Middletown, Delaware. As the years went on, they welcomed three daughters to their family. Laura was born in 2002, Lee was born in 2003, and Karen was born in 2005. Before their third daughter was born in 2005, David's parents, Thomas and Lenore Matusowitz, moved in. So David had a pretty close relationship with his parents and they had just recently sold their home in New Jersey. The weird thing is the arrival was like really abrupt. You know what I mean? There wasn't really any discussion between David and Christine. They just showed up and that was that. David was perfectly pleasant, but he was also somebody who, I don't know, there was no debating with him. He was demanding, assertive, my way or the highway type of things. So when David's parents arrived, Christine had babies in the house. You know what I mean? They pretty quickly, I don't know, established themselves as part of the family. And what I mean is like Lenore, David's mother, was very involved, like too involved. Well, the dynamic in the house just like shifted big time. Basically, David's parents were like, how would you say, uh, assholes. They were assholes. So Lenore was overbearing strong-willed, but also like passive aggressive, like the kind of person who would say, well, that's not the way I would do it, but what do I know? Ugh. Tom, David's father, was a Navy veteran and he had been a police officer for about four years before he was forced to resign in 1974 due to a policy violation of some kind. Nothing criminal, but it was either resign or be formally charged. So, zoinks. He later worked for the Postal Service and also as a school bus driver. So a few years before this, Tom developed a brain tumor. It wasn't cancerous, but it was definitely impacting his day-to-day, -day, mostly like his personality. Basically, it just made him like generally paranoid and grouchy. Tell me what ex-Navy cop dad is not paranoid and grouchy. Also, Thomas was like a gun nut. You know the kind. He talked often about how well he could use them and it wasn't necessarily like 
threatening, but it wasn't far off and it made Christine really uncomfortable in her own house. Not to mention, Lenore was like a super bossy pants with the kids, very critical of her parenting. After 10 months of them being there, she had enough and got David to ask them to leave. They ended up buying a house nearby someplace in Delaware. Even though they had recently had this third daughter, you know, making that four daughters in total, the marriage was just falling apart. You know, David was also getting like weirder and weirder. His mom was like in his ear all the time regarding the kids and Christine's mothering. David also kept several weapons in the house. He was an experienced shooter, which is not necessarily alarming, but you know, he sometimes took special courses and he read survivalist books and just started going down a weird path. Christine said that he once told her, I know how to kill people and leave no trace. That's a weird thing to say. He's an optometrist. Aren't they like chill? Anyway, so after five years of marriage, Christine filed for separation in 2006 and moved out of the house, which was not acceptable in David's view. I mean, how dare Christine leave him? You know, he's the breadwinner. He's the one that's in charge. He wanted sole custody of those kids by the way. He wanted control over any decision regarding the children. He refused to allow anyone to babysit the kids except for his parents. Anyways, each of them, David and Christine, were both ordered to undergo like a psychiatric evaluation for part of the custody arrangements. Now, Christine had had some trouble with postpartum depression mostly, but by this time was well adjusted and everything was cool, she's under control. Definitely no signs of threat or harm to the children. David David's evaluation though. David's eval reported that he was suffering from anxiety, depression, and stress, and that he was, quote, at risk of losing touch with reality. By February of 2007, the court granted shared custody between David and Christine. David did not like this, and his parents were pissed off. David's mother, Lenore, grew increasingly vocal about her opinions of Christine, and they were wild, fantastical allegations that were none of them were true. We'll come back to that. David never made any complaints about Christine's worthiness or uh, abilities to parent the children. There was never any concerns about their safety or well-being, none of that stuff. It was all just about control, you know. Okay, so he and Christine continued to co-parent as best as possible, and um, Christine just tried everything she could to avoid David's nutso parents. In the summer of 2007, you know, just a few months after this custody arrangement was made final, David told Christine that he wanted to take the girls on a little summer vacation to Disney World. You know, they were going to fly down to Florida. His mom, Lenore, was going to come with because of course she was. The girls at this time were aged two, four, and seven. So the trip came and went, and when the girls didn't return home on time, Christine's heart sank. As you can imagine, that trip to Disney World was a big old lie. What David was doing was fully kidnapping those kids. They didn't fly to Florida. In fact, he had purchased an RV, fake social security cards, fake passports, and drove the RV down through Mexico, winding through Central America, and they settled in a small village in Nicaragua. I mean, holy shit. Holy shit. It became clear very quickly that David's family was also in on it and they were helping him. So let's back it up just a little bit. On August 15th, 2007, David secured a home equity loan for $249,000. Now the bank required his and Christine's signatures on the documents since both of their names were on the mortgage. Now when he went to the bank to sign the closing documents, he told the loan officer that Christine was just in the other room. So he took the documents out of the room to take to Christine for her to sign. She wasn't there. I mean, duh. Christine was absolutely 100% not present. Sneaky snake David didn't bother telling the bank that he and Christine were divorced. The loan officer had no clue. Well, once the money was released to David's checking account, he immediately transferred it to a bank account that had been opened in New Zealand under his father's name, Shady Boots. These kids are gone without a trace. Their dad has a ton of money. Remember, he was a very successful optometrist. 
He had a lot of money. Christine did everything that she possibly could to like stay strong. The lead investigator on the case worked every day for 19 months. Law enforcement was all over it, you know? They looked at bank records, credit cards, every everything that they could leverage to try to track him down. And bank records did lead them to the RV. The RV was actually purchased by Lenore. There was also a Texas property near the Mexican border that had been purchased by Thomas. And there was a home purchased in Panama by David. So law enforcement, investigators, all the usual suspects, they all were working together. You know, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, the DOJ, the State Department, and all the international partners. Like I said, this investigation went on for 19 months. So about Two years after David first ran off with the kids, cut to March of 2009, David, Lenore, and the girls were found in Nicaragua. They were living in the RV, the camper, the motorhome, whatever you want to call it. We did put an all points bulletin out uh, to be on the lookout for a 33 foot RV with Delaware tags on it. Um, it's not a very common vehicle in Nicaragua. They called themselves the Blanco family. If you don't speak Spanish, Blanco means white. Oh my God. The funny part about that though, is that the locals already were getting weird vibes from David and Lenore, you know? So they amongst themselves called David Sequestrador, which I'm probably not saying that nicely, but hang on. Sequestrador. Sequestrador. <laughs> it means kidnapper. <laughs> Anyway, so David and Lenore were both arrested and extradited to the United States and the girls were returned to Christine in Delaware. Hooray! Obviously there has been wrongdoing. The case went to court. David and Lenore <laughs> said that Christine was sexually abusing the children and that's why they took them. <laughs> Come again? That is 100% not true. At the sentencing, the U.S. District Court Judge Gregory Sleet noted that David never said anything about that. He never said anything regarding concerns for safety of the kids. He said, quote, it is clear that you prepared for months for the kidnapping of your children. In September of 2009, Lenore pled guilty to crimes relating to the kidnapping and was sentenced to 18 months in federal prison, which she served. 42-year-old David pled guilty to bank fraud and international parental kidnapping, and he was sent to federal prison for almost three years with an additional five years of supervised release. The two of them pretty much got the minimum sentence. The end. Just kidding. We are just getting started, you guys. <laughs> Christine also filed a suit against David and his family, citing, you know, monetary damages and, you know, to cover the cost of counseling and therapy and all these things that were required for her and the kids. Her lawyer, James Woods Jr., started getting letters directly from Tom and Lenore Matusowitz. The letters told him how terrible his client was, that Christine was a child molester, that she was crazy, all kinds of disgusting lies. He didn't believe any of it. The crazy just keeps ramping up. Tom and Lenore's lawyer actually quit on them in February of 2011, citing that his clients were not taking his advice and they were actually doing things that were harmful to their case. Also, they weren't paying him, so <laughs> there's that. The same month, they filed for bankruptcy in Texas. Lenore wrote to the court and said that they had spent over a million dollars trying to get their granddaughters to safety. And now there's no money left and the girls are still in the custody of their terrible mother. What planet, what planet does she live on? I don't know. Now remember, David and Lenore are in prison for kidnapping the daughters for two years. Anyways, the last two years of David's sentence in federal prison, um, he was actually in a prison in Texas. David's sister, Amy, and his parents, Tom and Lenore, all had moved to Texas. I think Amy was there first. It doesn't matter, but I think Amy was there first. The parents left Delaware. Everybody's in Texas now. They lived in a town called Ed Couch, Texas, which is like right on the border of Mexico. So from their prison cells, Lenore and David started working on a plan for revenge against Christine. By that December, they had come up with a plot that was like meant to make Christine's life a living hell. And with Tom and Amy's help on the outside, they began a vicious, vicious smear campaign against Christine. They used snail mail, email, 
newsletters, YouTube videos, blogs, website, you name it, they were using it, flyers. The goal was to blast Christine as a child abuser, neglector, molester, and you know, mentally ill and violent towards Lenore. They had never had any violent altercations, but okay, Lenore. Letters were even sent to the kids' school, to their neighbors, their friends, their relatives. It's really kind of rich because when the girls were discovered in that dirty trailer in Nicaragua, they were skinny, their teeth were rotten, one of them had pink eye, they had lice. Their dad's an optometrist and she has pink eye. It's too much for me. Like this is the kind of alternate reality that they're living in. Christine eventually dropped her lawsuit against David because it became clear that it was just gonna go nowhere and all it did was sort of keep them closer to her, you know? In August of 2011, Christine was able to terminate David's um, visitation and parental rights. I mean, that's a no brainer, right? He kidnapped them for two years and he was in federal prison because of it. David, who pled guilty, by the way, he fought the petition. He applied for joint custody of the kids. David, my dude. Anyway, with rights terminated, the Matusiewicz family turned that shit up to 11. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. They ramped up this stalking, harassment, intimidation project, and then they started surveilling Christine and the kids. So through their little online campaign, they had wrangled up a bunch of gullible dum-dums who believed all the things that they said. These people were helping them. You know, they were emailing them updates. They were driving past Christine's house, recording video and sending it to them. I mean, just the level of crazy is off the charts. So one of the dummies actually has a website about John Bonet Ramsey, that's its own level of crazy. But there's a section, a tab on the website that um, is hosting Lenore's craziness. This is the title of the website. A grandmother's impossible choice and a father's willingness to risk everything in order to rescue his three little girls. Okay, so now it's April of 2012 and David's prison term is complete. He moved in with his nutso family in Texas. First, he moved in with his sister, Amy, and then he moved in with his parents, Tom and Lenore. Okay, so David has no parental rights, but he still has to provide financial support for the children, which he thought was straight up bullshit. So he petitioned the court in Delaware for a hearing on, you know, the support arrangement. Meanwhile, this online stalking and harassment has continued. And in fact, it's getting worse, worse and worse and worse, every day worse. Now, when I say this online stalking, I don't just mean like mean Facebook comments. I mean like full on campaigns where they're like reaching out to her job, to her church, to all these things, telling them that she's a child molester. Crazy. All right, so the court decided to hear the case and David's parole officer in Texas allowed him to travel to Delaware for the court hearing. What David never mentioned was that his parents were going to accompany him. So the hearing is scheduled for February in Delaware. Sometime between February 4th and February 7th, David and his parents traveled together, two separate cars, from Texas to Delaware. In the cars, they brought with them handguns, ammunition, bulletproof vest, restraints, an electric shock device, several gas cans, a shovel, and lots of pictures of Christine and Christine's house. This is not good. On the morning of February 11th, 2013, David and Tom arrived at the Newcastle County Courthouse in Delaware. Inside the car was the insane cache of supplies that they had brought with them. David went ahead inside. He went through the security line, through the magnetometers, you know, the metal detectors. And Thomas just kind of like skulked around in the lobby. Kind of weird, right? I mean, obviously to go any further, he would have had to gone through that metal detector and we can imagine why he wouldn't want to do that. Now, this space that he's hanging out in, it's not big, okay? Either you go straight through the mags or you don't go inside. There's not like a waiting area. So the hearing was scheduled for 8.30. So shortly before 8 a.m., David walked to the other floor of the building right as Christine was arriving. So Christine was arriving with her friend, Laura Melford, 
As they entered the courthouse lobby, Thomas drew a 45 caliber Glock Model 21 from his vest and opened fire on Christine, killing her immediately. As Laura turned to flee, he then shot her multiple times. She was also killed immediately. So the scene was absolute mayhem. The police officers swarmed him, a shootout ensued, and then Thomas fired on them. He actually shot two of them, injuring them. They survived. He managed to get a little bit of space between him and the officers before he drew the gun on himself and pulled the trigger. When they searched Tom's body, they found on him two handwritten death certificates, one for Christine and one for her lawyer. Now, if you don't think that is fucking crazy enough, the next day, David's sister, Amy, the propaganda director of the cyberbullying campaign, filed for custody of the children. This bitch. Joke's on you, Amy, and this is a little nugget that I did not know until I was researching this case. When a person loses their parental rights, that loss extends to any status of that person's immediate blood relatives for the purposes of like preferences and family court. So essentially what that means, it's like the familiar relationship doesn't exist at all. That means they have no right to information or influence on the location or decisions or anything to do with the kids. Well, this delusional ass shrew said, quote, I hope the judges that have made these life altering decisions for these families never have to experience another judge saying that you cannot contact your own children. Is she fucking serious? Life altering decisions? You mean like when your dad murdered their mother? Like that? When the authorities searched the Matusowitz's trailer home in Texas, they found a, a lot of crazy. So Tom and Lenore distrusted the government and it showed. So they had lots of guns, several boxes and jars of ammunition, letters, court documents, flags, signage, all the things that you would imagine were there. Lots of don't tread on me. They also found a letter that had been left behind for Amy and the letter described a storage unit where Tom had put all of his guns. The letter inside said, quote, All my guns, take them, protect them. They will be your only freedom in the coming years under what was once my government. When government takes your grandchildren away, it ceases then being your government. Wow. So Christine Belford was murdered in cold blood after having her kids stolen from her for two years, then suffering four years of stalking, harassment, and intimidation. Now Thomas unalived himself at the scene of the crime. David, Lenore, and Amy were in deep shit. They hadn't just been tormenting Christine for all this time. <laughs> These mouth breathers had created a long and deep trail of evidence that led straight to them. Okay, so with Christine murdered out of the picture, do you think that's enough to get Lenore to stop? No. So Christine is dead, murdered, and Lenore is still 100% going strong with the smear campaign. She appeared many times on a very, very weird radio show that I think radio show is a very generous term for what this is. It just seems like it's phone calls that are recorded and put on YouTube. So in the videos, Lenore is like sitting at a table next to the host and she's reading from a notebook, I guess, that she's written herself. It's meant to outline all of the terrible things that Christine has done to the kids and why they're doing what they're doing. She offhandedly said, when I sell David's three blonde white American girls, I'm going to get $50,000 each and they'll never be found because of my con connection, I'm sorry, my connections to the local crime family. I mean, Lenore also does this thing where she cries, but no tears come out. Where have we seen this before? <laughs> I mean, I watched all these videos just for you, for science, and they're insane. By changing the sheets, I discovered a rap sheet, a police report describing a convicted pedophile. I wondered, was this the pedophile she was talking about who agreed to purchase my three grandchildren? She's out of her mind, okay? She says that she didn't know what Tom was up to. None of it was planned. Okay, girl. So the actual shooter is dead, but David, his mother Lenore, and his sister Amy definitely participated in a very active and vicious cyber stalking campaign that led to that moment. Their actions directly contributed to the death of another person, and they all got charged with it. They went to trial 
A trial was held, and it lasted five weeks. In the case, all of the ridiculous allegations against the now deceased Christine were torn to shreds. Part of that included sworn testimony from their oldest daughter. At that time, she was about 13 years old, and she said on the stand, quote, I was there. I would know. She also recalled being shocked when she googled her name and a website popped up with accounts of her being sexually assaulted by her mother. None of that was true. When asked how she felt after learning that her mother had been killed, she said, pretty much like, wow, not surprising. I knew it would happen at some point. I mean, if I haven't like nailed this point down, as much as David and Lenore were fighting tooth and nail for these kids, they didn't want to be with them. They want to be with their mother. So other trial witnesses included Delaware Family Services and a pediatrician who had treated the girls before and after they had been taken to Nicaragua. There was no abuse at any time. Christine's daughter from the previous relationship, 19-year-old Catherine, she testified about the constant fear that they lived in because of the Matusowitz family. She said that their home was equipped with security cameras and alarms, and Christine slept with baseball bats on either side of her bed. Bed. They even got two German shepherds for protection. As the date of that hearing approached, they even had a safety plan that they had rehearsed at home, you know? They had planned to escape through an upstairs window and then run to a neighbor who was a state trooper. They were expecting something terrible to happen. On the date of the shooting, Catherine actually took her younger siblings to school that day because Christine needed to leave early to get to the courthouse. When she saw the news that there had been a shooting, she knew that it was her mom. The three shitheads, David, Lenore, and Amy, were convicted of conspiracy, interstate stalking resulting in death, and cyber stalking resulting in death. The judge concluded that David and his father, Thomas, acted with premeditation and intent with the murder of Christine, and based on David's repeated criminal contact and contempt for law, only a life sentence would protect the community and the children. King contact... Con he also concluded that Amy's stalking conduct was intertwined with the conduct of her family members and it was reasonably foreseeable that an act of violence was going to occur when her brother and parents went to Delaware for the court hearing. This decision, the cyber stalking resulting in death, was a landmark case and it's the first conviction of its kind in the United States. On February 18th, 2016, three years after the shooting, 48-year-old David Matusowitz and 70-year-old Lenore Matusowitz and 43-year-old Amy Gonzalez were sentenced in federal court to life, life in, prison in prison for the murder of Christine Belford and Laura Melford. At the time of sentencing, Lenore was in very poor health, so the decision was actually delivered to her bedside at Jefferson Medical Center in Philadelphia. And there's actually a recording of it. The judge is there saying, you know, is there anything that you need me to know before I impose this sentence? And this woman is so delusional that she starts like blaming Thomas. She didn't know what was gonna happen. And he's like, excuse me, excuse me. We've already covered that in the trial. So. On May 6th, 2016, Lenore Matusowitz died in prison. Bye. David Matusowitz is currently serving his life sentence at the US federal prison in Terre Haute, Indiana. So that friends is the story of David Matusowitz in his shitbird family. Thanks again to Stephanie for recommending this story. I am so sorry that something so terrible happened to people that were so close to you, but this was a terrible, terrible story just the way we like it. If you are interested in any of the makeup that I'm wearing, I know it's a little wild today, I was feeling spicy, <laughs> just check down in the description box because everything is linked. Also linked down below is the merch store and some coupon codes for various goodies. Thank you so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to this channel before you leave today. I upload new videos here on YouTube every week and you can follow me on all of the other socials as well. That is it for now. I will see you next time in the next video. Bye. Lenore Manus Manusowitz. Base Fuck. Kidnapper. No, say it in Spanish. So a few years, a few, a few years before this. Okay, let me get myself together. Kidnapper. Nope, I want it in Spanish. Weird. I have to check. Am I recording? Am I recording? Sequestrador. 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 Sequestrador.